Welcome back, Zerke fans, to Nanalisa Don, our main your host, Dominic, and we have another match. This time it's going to be Sigel Catastrophe, Topcag versus Sprang, Droppy, and Zen for on. Oh, oops. On the map that they're on, which is Valus Marineris. I. Oh, I forgot to switch to this at the same time. I gave myself a whole five seconds to do this. And I didn't even do it right. Yeah, so this is, again, the Spooktacular Tournament 3v3, or 3v3 Spooktacular Tournament recap stream. This is a recap stream, so everything that happened was something that happened before. And that's just how it goes. So, I mean, it's it more of a tournament happened last week. I'm just doing the stream now because that's when I had the chance to do it. Because I was busy. All right. So now we can actually get started proper into the match. So Valus Marineris, much more of a macro map, much more what I consider appropriate for 3v3. Add in Sonia. I mean, it works all right, but it's... I think 2v2 is kind of the max that it really works. I don't know. It's a weird... It's a weirdly built map. Valus Marineris is a little bit more typical. Lots of metal extractors all over. It's a bit easier for people to recover as a result. And much more of a clear delineation between lanes. Like, much more clear idea of, you know, you have someone in the top, Someone in the bottom, someone in the little hills, or someone in the center, someone in the little hills, the bottom. And that's more or less what we're seeing. We have Sigara in the little hills, the bottom, going for jump bots. We have Tomcat going for air in the back. And Cloak is a catastrophe's choice to help deal with the top side of the map. While on the other side, Sprang going for gunships. And looking like they're going for a bit of a drop, too. A scallop drop right off the bat. Amphbot is drop his choice, while Zen for going for the shield bot factory. So we are going to see a scallop drop right off the bat, and I'm hoping this works, because... Last tournament, I remember we had a few scallop drops. Actually, we had a really major commander drop on Comet Catcher, and that went nowhere. So hopefully this works well, because it's nice to see a scallop drop actually pan out. I mean, it's one of those strategies that only comes up in team games, because in a 1v1 game, you have to build both factories, and then that makes it a lot harder to set up. Of course, the question is kind of hard. It's like, stop moving, scallop! I need to pick you up! Okay. It's got it picked up. We've got a scallop drop going. We do have some swifts coming in, however, which... Might actually be able to stop one of the gunships, or one of the Valkyries, right? Or Chirons, rather. Valkyrie, I think, is a larger transport. Yeah, the Chirons are basically dead. The Swifts are already up. One of them's going to go down. I think... Oh, no! Oh, they've been super lucky. The damage has been spread across all three of them. Scallop's coming in here, being dropped early. But that's fine. The Scallop's still able to survive. Still able to basically avoid trekking across the entire map. That would have taken a good couple minutes. So it saves time, but at the same time, the Pyro's coming in the back lines without a whole lot of defense to deal with them. But there is enough. The Bandits are able to stop the Pyro's. While at the same time, the Scallops are approaching, but no! Nice jump there. That's giving Scare all the room in the world to destroy basically everything Zenfer's built up. So Team XCOM is going to have a bit of a hard time here. And Team Mumble Clan, on the other hand, dealing with the Scallops coming in, but they're prepared. They have Reavers in here. The Swiss are helping out as well. The Reaver, I think, is actually going to be a little bit of a disadvantage just because of the numbers. And yeah, Glaive's coming here. Not at all. The Riots, I mean, Scallops are Riot units. But still, enough damage was dealt ultimately, so it doesn't matter. But I think this factory is still done. Top Gax Commander is really the best source of defense here. And I don't see that coming up yet. That are the Swifts. Honestly, this factory is done. Oh, are you seriously going to the Commander? No, go to the factory. Go to the factory. Go to the factory. If you get the factory, you've got it! Dravi, you've got it! Factory down, killed the, killed the scalp in the process, but still nailed an air factory. That is a very useful kill. And a lot of people say don't go for the factories initially because it's not as effective usually as, say, caretakers or whatever. But in this case, that's their air control is gone. Topcat has to rebuild that air factory if they want to get anything in the air. So right now, Team XCOM knows fully that nothing is going to be happening here that isn't, isn't on the ground. Everything that's done by teams, not Mumble Clan, is going to be grounded for the next minute. And that's fine. I mean, at this point, Team XCOM double checking, getting the Harpy in there just to see exactly what's going on. Maybe get rid of another something. Yeah, it's really just get information. But still, that information is good. They know that the Air Factory is being rebuilt. They know that essentially everything's going in a predictable fashion. And that's all they need to know. As long as they know that Team XCOM is going to be. Or sorry, the Team Mumble Clan is going to be attempting to rebuild air. They know that Team Mumble Clan is also not going to be building as much on the ground, and also that they that Team XCOM should probably build up some anti-air defenses just to be on the safe side. 
Although, going for another Scallop Drop, also pretty clever. I mean, there are still Swifts in the air, and, they, and I don't think that Team XCOM is going to get as lucky this time. I mean, there are only two Swifts, and it'll be another half minute before the Air Factory is done, so the Scallop Drop might actually have a pretty good chance. It's just that they kind of got lucky last time, because the Swifts ended up spreading their damage across the Karens, which to me is a little bit intentional. As you notice, the Karens are flying quite close to each other, so the Swifts are probably retargeting different ones as they fly around. And that worked out really well, because if it weren't for that, one of the Karens would have died around here, and then another one would have died maybe over here, like before they actually dropped off in this section in what ended up becoming a drop zone. But this time now, four of them. Four of them on top of everything else. Now, I think this is going to be fine. Scout drop coming in here. Again, targeting where the air factory will be. Although not, like, not as lucky this time. One of the Karens does get focused down, does get killed. But it almost doesn't matter. Scalp able to come in, destroy what's being built. I mean, the factory's not even going to be rebuilt yet. Top Guy's Commander under some threat, but that's not the main concern right now. The main concern is just the fact that there are Scallops in the base and nothing stopping them. And the factory again going to go down. Almost completely rebuilt too, so that's about 700 metal that's just wasted. Not to mention the fact that all this economy is, is gone. I mean, the Phoenixes are in place. They're going to help deal with this. But even then, they aren't really doing as much. And, I mean, okay, to be fair, actually, the Phoenix is doing quite a bit. I don't know why the scalp... Why are you not attacking the Metal Extractor? It was blocked up by Reclaim or something? I don't understand what was going on there. That was actually really weird. I don't know why the scallops weren't attacking that. I know what they're doing now. I mean, obviously, they're going to get rid of Seguero's backyard expansions, but still. That was a bit of a bug. At the same time, though, Catastrophe just attacking the front lines, deciding, you know, we're done with all of these scallop drops. Let's go in. Let's push the front lines. It's obvious that Team XCOM does not have much of a strong front line because they've been focusing all the resources on Scallops, which have been taken suicide missions, on top of the Karens, which have also been taken suicide missions. That's a lot of metal that's been thrown into Team Mumble Clan's base. At the same time, though, Bandits versus Rockos, Bandits win. I mean, okay, to be fair, the Reavers will be the Bandits, but still, that forces the Rockos back, that forces Catastrophe's entire force back, and that buys that much more time for Team XCOM to build up some amount of ground force to help deal with this. Not to mention, they still do have scallops. I mean, if the scallops get dropped in right next to the Rockos, the Rockos can't really do much. They're still going to die. Remember, the main range, the main reason why, scal why skirmishers have an advantage against riots is because of range. If you close the distance with the riots using a drop, the skirmishers have nothing. Incidentally, that also is true of this here Phoenix because there is no air pad. There is no air factory. None is even being rebuilt. I think Top Cax, yeah, there, there it is. Rebuilding it with the help of a caretaker to take a bit less time. Take 50 seconds in total, roughly. The main problem here being the moderator and the scallop. Oof. Getting mostly stopped. Bit of an unwise placeholder, however. Pulling the scallop just above ground to be able to help get rid of the caretaker. Not something you see very often, but that's how it goes sometimes. Placeholders, they hold things in place, as the name suggests. But they also pull them off the ground, which, in the case of some hills, not always the best concept. Not always the best idea. Still, I would say that this was a successful raid. Mobile Clan still saw the head in terms of economy, but they lost the factory. They have no air control. The fact that a second... Ooh, nice attack in the Rizigaro. The fact that a second scallop drop was able to come in. A third scallop drop! I'm not saying second scallop drop. Here's drop number three. The air factory is just now being finished up. There are no Swifts in play. There are no Phoenixes in play. The placeholder is the main reason why these scallops are not going to be able to do too much. But even then, having destroyed the Charons, the scallops able to do whatever they want. They're flying right above the base. They got full range of vision. They can destroy whatever the heck they feel like. Yeah, I. if it weren't for the puppies, that placeholder would honestly be more of a liability than an asset. Just for how much it was providing vision to those scallops. Still, I would say that was a fail drop. Like, that was definitely a well-defended drop by Seguero, making sure that their base does not get damaged any further. And now the air factory's back up. The Swiss are back up. There is really no opportunity for more scallop drops. I mean, not without massive risk. And I don't think they're going to be gone for anymore. I mean, the scallops are still... No, they are still being gone for Droppy. Just completely doing it on their own. Factory being dropped in the... Actually, sorry. Sprang and Droppy are currently of one mind, so not really sure which is which. But yeah, the spraying droppy hybrid creature, building gunship plant in the right next to the scout, right next to the scout, right next to the ambot factory. Not a terrible idea. They can at least drop where needed. Maybe not in a backyard harassment type, but they could drop right next to the Rockos. So, I mean Ronin rather. Could drop right next to the Ronin and help deal with them. That actually wouldn't be a bad idea. Like get rid of some of Catastrophe's forward force. Gives them for a lot more room to play around with.
But really, that's the main problem. Like, that's all they can really do, because Top Cac's Force here... I mean, the Swiss coming in, they will be stopping this drop. Or at least doing... I mean, no, they will be stopping the drop. There's no reason they won't be able to stop the drop. Yeah, forcing the Scallops to drop early. I mean, it provides a little bit of control over to the north side of the map, but again, the Phoenixes can now rebuild... Or sorry, rearm. Or be rebuilt, for that matter. And they're not right now, but they could be. The point is that there's nothing stopping... There's nothing really allowing these Scallops to get in. There's everything that's going to be in their way. The Ronin are moving in ahead of the Scallops. So, I'm not sure why Sprang slash Droppy is moving the Scallops in here, but I don't see much coming out of it that's going to be positive. At the same time, Seguero has completely dominated the entire South Hill section of the map, and that leaves Zen for losing this essentially naked expansion. Possibly most of their base. Team XCOM, they're a little bit high economically right now, but it's not by much. Scallops, however, actually are managing to do a fair bit of damage. The Ronin weren't quite in place to stop getting rid of all these power plants. Mumble Clan uh, had enough on power that it's not a big deal to lose a few solars, but at the same time, the Ronin kind of got out of position. This is where it's going to be a problem. Scalp's coming in here, getting disarmed, but I don't think the Ronin are going to be back in time. 13 seconds? No, not, not their walk speed, not the direction they're moving. Not when they're going the exact opposite way. So yeah, these Scallops pretty much could just waltz in the base still. And yeah, there it is. Disarm goes away. A couple more Metal Extractors going to go down. Possibly some more solar plants. I think that's gonna, that's gonna be it, though. It looks like, I mean, the the Reaver trying to help out, and the Reaver is gonna be able to get help get rid of one of them. Why is the scalp is going back? I don't know. Run away! Like seriously, run, run into the base. If you want to deal some damage, if you want to harass, run into the base. Why are you running? Ugh. I don't know why they're running towards the Ronin. Like the Ronin will kill them if they run away from the Ronin, as you kind of are supposed to do with riots. They're gonna run into their opponent's base and deal more damage. I was like the perfect situation when you're on the offense and your opponent is essentially playing defense from the outside. But either way, XCOM's still managing to stay ahead. Economically, at least. Territorially, though, I don't see that happening. Catastrophe coming in with the Glaives. They'll be getting rid of Droppy's Commander pretty quick. They tried. Not trying, though. Not going for it. Droppy's Commander level 2 with a machine gun. I can see why they wouldn't. I, a surround with the Glaives would still kill the Commander. But I think this is a better option. Avoid the commander entirely, get rid of some metal extractors, get rid of some solar plants. Don't worry too much about getting rid of the commander, because the commander death explosion would kill off the claves anyway. So this isn't a bad way to go. Unfortunately, the harpies coming in here, and the harpies do one-shot glaives. Although, with this many glaives, it might be a bit of a problem. Nope, no it's not. Nope, the glaive is able to come in and just deal with everything. Oh, is the energy panel going to go down? Oh, yes, it is, and that's going to be the end of the glaives! Oh, no, it's not. The fusion plant's going to go down, that's going to be the end of the glaives. But that's actually a pretty effective end. If XCOM loses that, that fusion plant, and they will, that puts them not quite at East all stage, but that does mean they can't reclaim anywhere near as much. The main thing to me, though, is the fact that the south side of the map has been basically taken over. I mean, there's still some fighting going on on the north side of the map. Catastrophe's glaives did cut a swath into XCOM's base, but it's not going to be that much. I mean, ultimately, Team XCOM does still have command of the north side of the map. They've lost the south side. Zen for trying to rebuild that, but it's only going to go so far, especially as the center is still highly contested. The Thunderbird coming in here, that should be it. That should allow Catastrophe to waltz right in with the Ronin and wipe out everything, but it's not quite enough. A few of the bandits did not get stunned out, or rather disarmed, leaving the Ronin to retreat. No real way to get in. Knight's coming in to try to help out further, but really the Swifts are the main offensive force here. Like, Tomcat's the main reason why there's as much as much momentum going forward for Team Mumble Clan as there is right now. Now, the Segura coming in from the bottom with the Jacks. Nice flank here. That should get rid of basically all of Zenford's forward base. And with that, that leaves basically this Dante as being the... Wait, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd the Dante go? There's a Dante being built right here. Ah, here it is. That leaves this Dante basically the only thing. And it's like Hercules coming in here to help with the Dante. I guess Valkyrie is an old name. Why do I think of Valkyrie? Whatever. Hercules for what is likely a Dante drop. An interesting choice. I don't think that's going to work. I mean, there's what, 20 Swifts? 24 Swifts! Yeah, that, that Hercules is done. There is no way it's going to be able to get halfway across the map without being destroyed. I mean, you got to bear in mind, Team Mumble Clan has pretty much got full radar coverage of their opponent's base. They're going to see this coming. They're going to see a fast-moving thing over on the side. And they're going to wonder, what is that? Fast-moving orange thing. Well, what has orange been? Orange been dropping this entire game. That's probably another drop. Actually, no, this was not even going for it yet. 
They will know. Visual confirmation has been reached. And there's the Swiss coming in as soon as they get the visual confirmation of the Hercules. And it's still plus the Dante in closer than it would otherwise be, but also heavily damaged in the process. Like three quarters HP right at the start. Still take us a lot closer to Segura's base. I mean, mission accomplished as it were. Still manages to get in. Still manages to get the... Get through everything. It doesn't actually have to go through all Segura's stuff. It doesn't have this giant section of the map it has to walk through. Oh, still 14 seconds of disarm. Jack's trying to... Jack's and is coming in here. Should be able to get rid of it on top of the Swifts. Yeah, this Dante. Not really doing so hot thanks to that Thunderbird. And again, this is the thing we've seen with Sprang and Joppy. They've been doing a lot of suicide runs. And it hasn't really amounted to much, unfortunately. Like, that Dante in particular just get, got rid of by the Swifts. I honestly don't know why they're going for the drops anymore. I can kind of see because... Again, Valus Marineris is a large map. I can kind of see why you'd want to drop things. Thank you, FFC. FFC in chat pointed out that Valkyrie was Karen's old name. Okay, so I wasn't hallucinating. That's what I thought. Anyway, back to what I was saying with drops, though. Speaking of the Karen, is that I can kind of see because this is a larger map, walking units across does feel like it takes a long time. But the problem is that it is not working. Like, the Hercules is dying. That's... How much metal even is that? 750 metal. That's a good... Th uh, that's... Well, you could not quite double the forces up. Probably wouldn't double the forces up front, but like this, this group here would be 50% larger with the cost of the Hercules. Or, like, even that, it's like another Hercules coming up here. That's a fifth of the cost of the Dante. It's, you have it true already. There's a lot more you could do with that than just getting a Dante in about a minute sooner. Especially the way this game is going, the players, like, it, they're kind of keeping it a bit of a steady state in the center of the map, so I don't really see any major advantage to the speed. Especially compared to the advantage you gain from having more units in the front lines actually helping push the front lines. Like, the one advantage I can kind of see is that it gives more room for their opponents to deal with it, but it's not even going to happen. Resign coming in from XCOM as they are basically done. I don't think they were that far behind. I know they weren't. In terms of metal used, they were just about on par. Army value was a little bit lower, but mainly because of the Dante dying. If that Dante hadn't died, then it would have actually been again on par. The Thunderbird was being a problem, and I think, I think honestly, the main, the main takeaway I would get from that is, you know your opponents go air, get the anti-air to deal with it. Because we saw a lot of Ronin, we saw a lot of Bandit, not even Ronin, we saw a lot of Bandit, saw a lot of Rogues, didn't see a lot of anything else. Didn't see a lot of Vandals, I didn't notice a lot of Razors for sure, like, static defense as far as dealing with air went. I mean, it's hard to tell now because it's all just blown up. But there wasn't really a lot dealing with it. And that left all these Swifts able to just run amok. And that's the thing, is that meant the drops couldn't do much. Uh, granted, the drops could have probably done a lot if they had well, if they'd gone to the front lines and just dropped off Dante's to massively reduce the amount of time it takes, just as a ferry route, essentially. That would have worked well, because that way it would have put a lot more force in the front lines, it would have pushed catastrophe back. Sagara would still be in a bit of an advantageous position, but they're on hills. You gotta deal with that in one big push. Catastrophe, on the other hand, they could seed the center, and that would be a lot more room. That'd be the north side for Team XCOM. And then from there, they could they could fire into the main base. And yeah, Seguero's the most defended, but just contain Seguero's base. Like, okay, it's hilly, and they have jump bots, and they can kind of get around it. But it's also going to be the hardest thing to attack. Just contain their base, deal with everything else, try to establish a really strong foothold on the north side of the map, at least. So Seguero's the south. Well, okay, take the north. And then from there, just take the east, and Zagero can kind of help defend, but they're still a bit far away. And if you take the north, then it's a lot easier to set up a ferry route through the north, because you set up enough anti-air, set up some chainsaws and razors and such, the swifts can't do anything, they just get killed. So I would have liked to see something like that, but it was clear that Zagero and Droppy were very focused on that drop, which I guess is appropriate given the name. So they're very focused on getting those drops working, and unfortunately they just weren't. There was just too much air control on Topcac's side, on on Mumble Clan's side for that to ever happen. But anyway, that was that. So the next match is going to be... Oh, first off, let's look at the next set of results. The next set of results being that was... I mean, so we saw Catastrophe, Top Cat, Zero win. Dreadback, Pokemon, and Wesley also won the not participating team, or against not participating team. Steel Blue, FFC, and Green Squid won against Venom, Kingston, Astron. Bit of an upset there. And 400 Mano and Isaac winning against Diamond, Firepluck, and Izzeride. Mm, even match. Kind of makes sense. So the next one I'm going to be doing is going to be the match between 
400 mana and Isaac against Segaro Catastrophe and Top Cac. Yeah. Alright, so that is going to be this one right here. So stay tuned, that'll be up in a minute or so.